everyone. So today's video is going to be a video all about my favorite brushes. I'm going to take you through every single like part of my makeup and sort of show you the type of brush that I think is best for like powder products or foundation or crease or liner or whatever, blending, um, all that good stuff. It's going to be different than any other like top blush video that I've done in the past because um, rather than just saying like, oh, this is a great kit, this is a great kit, these are my favorites, this is a good brand, I'm going to take you through and show you specific things. And I'm definitely not saying you have to get a certain brand. You can definitely take my recommendations of me saying like, hey, you need, you know, a brush that looks like this or that's made out of this or that might feel, you know, softer or like this. Um for whatever you need a brush for, and then you can find a similar one if you don't want to get the exact one that I have, or whatever, you can do whatever you want. Um, but I am going to show you some different brands too, and truly, truly what I use. I thought about going to Ulta and trying to pick up a few different brands that I hadn't tried, or finding a cheaper brand and thinking, oh, you know, but then I thought that's not authentic. I always like to show you guys truly what I have, what I like to use and this is going to be no different. You know, and that's why I'm doing it because it's basically my recommendations and things that I like. And where brushes are concerned, I, I think this is so so important because really um, years back when I first started um, getting some nicer brushes and sort of looking at brushes and tools the same way that I looked at makeup, like, you know, getting better makeup products for certain things or getting you know, quality makeup products that felt a certain way or that, you know, I preferred for whatever reason, I started looking at brushes the same way too when my makeup changed. And really, truly, if you get good brushes, they sort of, they definitely do the work for you. Because everyone is so picky about, you know, oh, the pigmentation of this is off, or oh, I wanted that, or I wanted this. Even people that are the most, like, bargain conscious, you know, because you really, you know, the more, I think, price conscious you are about things, the more you want to find good things. Um, you know, so it's surprising to me that a lot of people have a hard time justifying investing in nice brushes because you may not use a particular blush every day or a particular eyeshadow that you were so picky about, but you will use the brushes every day no matter what product you're using. So that's why I think it's important. So I'm going to take you through the brushes. I have three main brands. Is it three or three main brands of brushes that I really like. But first, when I keep them on my counter, I think that storing them and all that is is important because, you know, you don't want them to be just like rattling around in the bottom of a bag or, you know, getting messed up. So on my counter, I like to keep um, containers like this of some sort. You can keep cups. I know if we ever, when we go on vacation, I will um, bring my brushes in this and I can just sit them out. This is actually two tops. I have a bottom too. Okay. Um, okay, so... This fits together, makes like a tube, you know, and you can store your brushes. But then it's great because I can keep my eye brushes and one on my face. I have three on my counter. I have two face brushes. Um, <clears throat> I'm like scratchy today. Um, two face brush containers since the face, face brushes are a little larger. And then I have one eye brush container, which that holds a ton because eye brushes are teeny. Um, so those are nice. And that's actually the container from the um, a Sigma kit, which is nice because it comes with eyes and face brushes. But I'm mostly talking about individual things. But that is a good tip. If you want like a group of brushes, I would say the best brand that really does that because I know MAC doesn't do that. Um, and I'm sure you can find a set of brushes anywhere, but like for a big set of starter brushes, or you can even buy smaller sets, um, they do, that's I think the best place to get them. Of course, I'm going to link everything below, so don't feel like you're, you have to remember every, I'm going to, everything's going to be below. Okay, so starting off with foundation, I have two foundation brushes that are my favorite and a sponge. My sponge is in the bath because I was washing it. Um, okay, so first, this is called... I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's the Airbrush, I believe it's the Airbrush Finish Something Foundation Brush by Tarte. This is similar to the, um, the fibers of the Sigmax brushes, like we all know and love from Sigma. I've been in love with these and like singing their praises since before they were even available. I just, I love these. They're like velvet. Um, especially this one, but I'll talk about that in a moment. This one is different. Sigma doesn't have one like this. The Sigmax brushes are very dense, which is good. 
but sometimes I really like using this one because it's just big and fluffy. Um, it feels so velvety smooth, and it's just amazing. Oh, I should have painted my nails. Okay, well, whatever. On a video that I'm going to be, like, showing my nails the most. <laughs> oh, who cares? Um, but anyways, this one is just so great. I love the size of it. I love how it's dense enough to where it doesn't eat up all the foundation. It really, like, applies it well, but it is fluffy enough to where you can really buff it over and get a good blend, which you can't really do with these. Um, you can do that, but you just have to work a little longer. Um, day to day, I would say I would still grab for this one. This is my F80. Out of all the Sigmax brushes, like I've always said, this is just my favorite. I've done a ridiculous amount of foundation videos and tutorials over the years, and one is actually coming up soon that's a little different. Um, and I probably have used this more than any other brush for any of those. It's flat, which I like. I, I also like this one that is the F84. This is the one that I also use. But I feel like this one blends better because it has more give. This one is very stiff, um, which I like for some things. This is nice for like if you had like a cream contour product or if you were going to apply um, a liquid contour product or like a darker foundation, this is the way to go. Uh, but for foundation, I think that this flat is the best. It's just so great. Another foundation tool that I absolutely can't get enough of is the Beauty Blender. I go in phases, use the F80 for a little while, and then I'll go back to my Beauty Blender, and then I'll go back to a brush, and so it just sort of all depends, but I think that the Beauty Blender is imitated a ton, but I have never found one that is the same. They might feel the same dry, but when you wet them, this one literally like triples in size and just feels like the softest thing ever. Don't ever use it dry. You must use it wet for you to get any sort of like benefit or any sort of like for it to be worth it at all. And it really gives the most natural effect. I'm obsessed with Beauty Blender, so um, be wary of the imitations. All of the ones I've tried may feel the same, but when you wet them, they're just not as soft and they just don't work the same. I also have this one, the tapered F86. This one, you guys know, I use for my under eye concealer. My under eye concealer is, as you guys have seen, always kind of like a brightener concealer. So it's it's like usually really a little bit lighter, um, sometimes like pink tinted. And when I apply it, I like using this large brush because it almost sort of pulls it down. Like it pulls it down into that area where I like to apply it and used to I would use that MAC, um, what was the color, Emphasize, and I would always put a little right there. Um, I need to get some more of that. I just like to dab it. Ever since I got this one, I never really use this for foundation a lot. I think I may have used it a couple times for foundation, but to me it just can't be beat um, for this eye area. And that brings me to like cream products, powder products. Uh, if you are vegan, if you, you know, buying synthetic brushes are really important to you, I have never been a super big fan of most synthetic brushes, other than of course like those types, like foundation-y brushes, I think you can get away with more like synthetic because it's liquid, the brush doesn't soak it, it's, it gives it more slip, but like when you're applying eyeshadow or blush or something like that, I've never been a fan of synthetic bristles because I feel like they just don't blend as well. Um, but if that is important to you, Sigma does have the bunny kit, which is basically all of their basic brushes, but um, really soft synthetic. They almost, I mean, if I didn't know, this feels like a natural brush. And this is F40, which is my favorite br blush brush. <laughs> um, this one is just the natural haired one that is the white. And I just, I, I never reach for a tr more traditional blush brush. This is it. It just fits perfectly, you know, in the little contours of your face can blend it really well. These are just wonderful. And I do like this one, the the um, synthetic version, for cream blushes. I think you really just can't go wrong with the just plain old concealer type brush. This one is a Sigma one. Um, and then of course, like I always say, I like to use smaller brushes for concealer, no matter if they're meant for eyes or lips or whatever. Um, these this E15 brush, it's the um, flat square one. This is the one that I've been using for my concealer lately. And um, not even, well, this this one I've been using lately, but over the years, I have used these a lot. And I just like that, that it has the little, like, 
you know, squared off so it has the little sharp edges, but then it's large enough to where you can like paint it over larger areas if you have like redness right there. So this E15, these, this type of brush that's made like for your eyes, I just love it for concealer. It's literally probably my favorite concealer brush. For bronzer, I cannot get enough of this Chanel brush. It's the number two powder contour brush. And yes, Chanel brushes are expensive, and this is the only one that I, that I own. I just thought this was so unique. I didn't have any other brushes that looked like this, and it is, and I'm really glad that I got it. I've even played with other brushes that are shaped like this, but really don't feel like this at all. It's very dense right here and very fluffy right here. Um, I love it because I can really like get my bronzer, you know, like where I need it. Um, I can contour with it if I want. I can contour more easily with my bronzer or with a contouring product. Um, or I can just dust it over and then blend. It's just really great. It's pinched enough to where it is um, precise enough to get it like in your hairline and where you need it, like I said, for contouring. But then it's also large enough to blend and and make like a really nice like if you really wanted to apply a product all over your face um so it's fluffy enough for that too but some bronzer brushes are like super fluffy and you have no control so this is great and as far as chanel brushes like i said i've never tried any other ones but i can actually say that i feel like this one is worth the money i didn't mention my powder brush after all that this is just the absolute best. It's the F25. And like I said, this one I've washed a ton. And you can see it hasn't been like, meow, hasn't gotten huge. Um, this one is just the best powder brush. I love this over a traditional, like, you know, flat, fatter looking powder brush. I like that it has a bit of a point. You can kind of almost like like lay the pro I don't I don't know it's, it's just great because you can kind of blot the product on you can dust it you can do whatever you can you know get in smaller areas with it but it's a large really soft brush and then the smaller version is what I use over um, my under eye concealer and I also use this for like highlight and stuff so when I put like my Laura Mercier secret brightening powder over my concealer I use this for actual highlight I just think that you can't beat these type of um, like duo fiber brushes. This is an F50. These are so soft. My Sigma, Sigma ones are just so soft. Um, when I use a product that I want to, you know, give me like an all over glow, uh, like my Luminous Light or something like that, a product like this that has a bit of a sheen to it, not like a huge highlight, but just something that you just want to lightly dust over a larger area just to give you like a nice glow. This is what I use. Um, it's precise enough, but it's still fluffy enough. So these are just wonderful. Moving on to eyes, there are so many that I could talk about, um, but these are the ones that are just my staples. Okay, so if I'm gonna use like a cream shadow, most of the time I use my finger. If it's a dark color or something that I really wanna blend out, I just, this is the best brush for that. It's an E44. Firm Blender by Sigma and it's domed and it's soft but it's dense and it's just perfect for blending out any sort of cream eyeshadows, cream bases, anything like that. So this I think if you like cream eyeshadows that's sort of a must. For laying down color this is just the brush that I always reach for. It's the E60. Um, I could also reach for like a little brush like this E55 like to pack on color but this is just what I most often reach for. If I'm going for like a darker look then yeah I might grab for one of these little guys but this I think just for like all over color I think everybody needs this. It's the E60. So blending I'll do the crease ones in a moment which kind of ties into that a little. Um, this, I think, is the most versatile. It's the E40. It's tapered. It's really fluffy. And I can apply crease color with this. Like, if I'm doing a lighter crease color, if I just want, like, a softer wash, or if I'm going to do, like, um, a blending shade, like my soft brown or something right in between that area, this is the best. And I also use this for eyeshadow. When I'm in a hurry, if I'm just using my, like, NARS All About Eve or something, I'll, I'll just use this brush only and dust it, you know, use every use it for everything so this is a really good one too a one that is like that but a little more dense a little more precise but still has the same softness is the e35 and this one is perfect for a little more precise crease color this is what i use most often on my crease when i'm doing um you know just a more normal crease color this one 
is great for like actually placing it and blending it a little. And then I would say this one that I just showed is better for actual blending. But if you could just get one, this one I think you're gonna have, you're gonna get more use out of. Cause you can always like place your crease color with a smaller brush like this, even if it's like a darker crease color. And then you can blend with that black brush that I just showed you. For this outer corner area, when I wanna like get more precise, this E25, it's very similar to the one I just showed, but it is pinched. Kinda like some of those larger like powder brushes that I showed you for my bronzer. So it kinda creates it like a little flatness, but it's still, um, it's still fluffy. So I like to use that on the outer, you know, on the outer edge too. For blending, another two brushes that are sort of like my heavy duty like blending brushes, the E50, this is another very versatile brush. I like to use this for um, highlight. It's very, very good for um, blending down crease color or anything like that. So this is just a great one. Good for kind of like shaping that outer corner too if you've gone down too far. Um, and then this one, it's one of their newer ones from, I think their Perfect Blend Collection. This is the E39. And it's, it's a little dense blender. It's really soft, but you can kind of like, if you're really doing a dark color, you can get around really easy without like pulling the color all over the place. And, um, and you can also apply color with this pretty precisely too. So this is a good one. And then just some smaller brushes. These are more like liner. Um, this one is the E20. And I use this all the time like for my lower lash line. This one is just great for like applying like darker shades right there. This is my lower lash line brush. Just anything that you could put down. This is just the one that I always reach for. And then of course little pencil shaped brushes. These are both E30s. This one I believe is from the bunny kit. So this is the synthetic version and this is the natural hair version. Um, I like using these for lighter colors, you know, like when I'm gonna put something on, on this like inner corner right there. Uh, but I like to use the synthetic one too to like blend out things under here to smudge um, eyeliner. This E65 I reach for every day. It's an angled brush like that and this brush type I purchased from MAC. It was my first nice brush purchase ever. I purchased an angled brush like this from MAC and um, I think I was in high school and I used it for my eyeliner. I would use black or dark brown eyeshadow as eyeliner and then when I started actually like wearing wearing eyeliner I would use this every single day with a matching eyeshadow and sort of blur it over that. And You guys have probably seen me do that a lot because that's just a trick that I always do. Um, I didn't do it today though, which is funny. Usually I don't like my liner to look super defined. I like to soften it just a bit. And this is just perfect for that. I think this is just one of those brushes that everyone needs because you can really do a lot with it. You can use it for your lower lash line. You can use it, like I said, for liner. Um, I really like this also to, um, to sort of smudge your liner too, like a pencil liner. Now I have not been into gel liner recently, but I've been kind of itching to like to get one and to get a new one that I really like and to like start that again because like I said I just always go in phases but um this E05 eyeliner brush it, this is just a typical eyeliner brush it's not a super thin one not a super fat this is just the perfect one and this one by Sigma I have a ton of these and they always hold their shape they stay really sharp but then they're very soft at the same time finally to round out the eye brushes um brow brushes. Now, I will talk about my little disposable spoolie brushes at the end, but when I do my brows, I have to have an angled brush and I have to have a spoolie brush. And when Sigma had their Beauty Expert kit, which I don't think they sell those anymore, they may still, I, I don't think so. I think they just sell all their products separately now. Um, this brush was in it. It's a little double-ended brush. It has the spoolie brush and then it has the little, um, angled brush on the end. And obviously I like to keep my angled brush separate than the one that I use for my liner because then, or you know, like the one that I showed that I, you know, use for my eyes. Because then you'd end up with like black brows and that's not good. Uh, so yeah, I have to keep them separate. But this is just so easy because you can do that and then you flip it and then you. So I just, I love this. And um, they don't sell it separately. I recently got some products from Tarte and I'm gonna look like I always, I, I link everything in the video. So if I can find this exact brush, I will link it. Um, hopefully they'll sell it separately. But it, it came in the brow mousse, which I haven't tried yet. 
um, but you get, it's the same brush, and this one feels really lightweight. It's, you know, like all their brushes, or most of them, I think, have that bamboo, you know, like the foundation brush that I showed. All these brushes are like rolling off the table. It's crazy. So yeah, same idea. Angled brush and a spoolie, so that's really nice. Hopefully you can get those separate, and I'm gonna like comb the internet to see. Hopefully you can. Now, I know a lot of these are similar to MAC brushes. Like I said, I'm not saying go out and buy this exact one. These are just the exact ones that I have that I'm being real and showing you. But you can find similar brushes like this in different brands if you want to go for a different brand, if you want to buy a Mac, if you want to do whatever. Um, Sigma, I think, does have the most variety of any brand, so you may not, you're definitely not going to be able to find all of these in Mac or in different brands. Um, this one is really funny. And it's a brush, I don't want to go on too long about it, I don't know what it is, I think it might be the 184, the, the numbers are rubbed off. This brush, when I first got it, I thought, this is kind of a joke. And I always thought about that with this brush. I always thought, I always look at it, even now, and I think, yeah, that brush is kind of a joke. But I use it every day, so it can't be that much of a joke. My friend Darby bought this brush. I think it was Darby. She bought this brush a long time ago, like right around the time I was first starting YouTube. And I remember her saying, like, yeah, the girl said you use it for Fallout. She was like, but I ended up returning it. It was kind of a joke. And I just always thought about that. She was like, that brush was a joke. Um, but so now, whenever I look at it, I think of that. But I had to include this in this video because I truly use it every day. Um, even if I don't get fallout, I really don't have that much of an issue with that. I, I grab for this brush every day after I do my eyes and just sort of go like that. And um, even like when I powder this under eye area, I'll kind of just like sweep over it just to make sure that there's nothing like, you know, hanging on or anything. Just a quick sweep. So, and you can use this for like um, highlight or anything like that. It's really good for powder highlight. So, I just thought that was funny. Um, this brush, I don't think it's enough love. And it's... It's good. These little fan brushes are nice. For lips, I usually don't do a lot of really super bold lip colors. That's just not what I like. I will if the look calls for it or if I'm in the mood. But that's just, I, I wear what I like and I don't wear bold lips on the daily. Um, but when I do, I like a brush that usually isn't made to be a lip brush. This is an E56 by Sigma and you can see I used, well, kind of. It's showing up on camera but I can't really see it. It looks kind of red. Um, it's not like slippery like a traditional lip brush that's very synthetic. Um, I kind of like this because it sort of like blurs it out and has a bit of a point to it so it's still exact, you know, but you get like a better blend. So this is my probably my favorite lip brush. It's an E56 and it says it's a lid shader brush. So again, like I've always said, don't feel like you have to use a brush exactly for what it says. Use it for what you feel is best. And then um, a little, uh, this is like their little lip brush. And um, you know, you can get little lip brushes anywhere. I wouldn't say to spend a lot on one, um, unless if you just are the type that uses a lip brush every day. And then of course, my little product finally that I cannot live without. I think these are like little priceless items. <laughs> the Spoolie Cheap Disposable Brush. These you can do so much with. You can use these for your eyebrows. You can use them for um, getting, you know, your mascara clumps. That's what I use mine every day for. I use my mascara and then I just sort of lightly run through to get any clumps out. And I also keep a different one um, in my vanity at my bathroom just to comb through my eyebrows after I wash my face. They don't dry all crazy. Um, and if I don't do my makeup, I can at least, you know, comb my brows these are just great. You can get them in a big bag from Sally's, from the drugstore. I don't even know what kind this is, but yeah, definitely these are great. Don't ever spend the money on an expensive eyebrow brush like this. It's just not going to make one bit of a difference. You can buy like a pack of 100 for like $5 and be set for life. Okay, so that is it. A lot of stuff that I talked about. A, a ton of products. Like I said, I will link to everything below because I know this is a ton of stuff to talk about. Um, but yeah, it sort of had to be long because this is a ton of stuff and I just, I really wanted to just show you. Um, these are the brushes that's like on my counter. And yeah, I have a couple of extra ones here and there, but really I could clean off all those and just use these and do anything with them. So, so these are my best of the best. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Have a fabulous week and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.